In our modern world, dating petroglyphs has been elusive and difficult at best. But a new paper coming out this year, well, is going to throw a wrench into the system because they have developed a non-invasive way to date petroglyphs quite accurately. And that's good news. Archaeometric studies on rock art at four sites in the northeastern Great Basin of North America. Now, rock art originated 46,000 years ago, all around the world. And it can provide unique insights into the minds of our human ancestors. However, dating these ancient images, especially of petroglyphs, remains a challenge. And then this new study, they explore the potential of deriving age estimates from measurements of the aerial densities of manganese and iron, which are in the rock varnish on the petroglyphs. Literally. Now, both of these elements on the rock varnish are part of the crust. And rock varnish forms in unique areas like the desert southwest. And these are deposited as thin, dark coatings like you're looking at here that accrete over hundreds, if not thousands of years. Slowly, they're very thin, these varnishes. And then after carving this layer, a petroglyph, Another layer of varnish again forms on the petroglyph and grows over the years. Now, a lot of people don't know what desert varnish on rocks or boulders are. And it's one of the most remarkable biochemical phenomenon in the arid desert region of the world. And it's called desert varnish. Although it may be only one hundredth of a millimeter in thickness, desert varnish often colors entire mountain ranges, black or reddish brown. Sometimes streaks, which look like flowing blood, occur on cliffs. Now, desert varnish is a thin coating or a patina of manganese, iron, and clays on the surface of sun-baked boulders. And according to Ronald I. Dorn and Theodore M. Oberlander, and this is back in a paper in 81, desert varnish is formed by colonies of microscopic bacteria living on the rock's surface for thousands of years. So that's an interesting caveat there. Now, the team in this study compared intact rock varnish with the varnish of the engravings. And we're thus able to classify them chronologically. And that was explained by Meritat Andrea together with his wife, bioscientist Tracy W. Andrea, the director emeritus of the Mainz Institute. And they conducted a total of 461 measurements directly on the site using a portable X-ray fluorescence device. The most important thing is that the rock varnish is not destroyed, damaged, or compromised in any way by these measurements. An absolute breakthrough. Now, the team focused on rock art sites in four regions of Idaho, Wyoming, southeastern Montana, in the northeastern part of the Great Basin, where the Shoshone's cultural area is to be found. Here, the diverse rock art spans a broad time period from the Paleo-Indian, which could be back at as long as 15,000 years ago, to the recent past. Moreover, the scientists were able to complement their own method with measurements of rock engravings whose ages had previously been dated using independent geochemical methods. These are methods that destroy the actual rock. Both age estimates were in excellent agreement and thus confirmed each other. And this is science. Well, in this case, science confirming science. 
Now, the comparison with other archaeological material at the rock art sites, which had been previously dated, also support the researchers' age estimates. So everyone is supporting this work, which is good news, because that doesn't happen a lot in science. Now, the researchers gained further certainty about the correct dating by determining at which rate the manganese was deposited in the rock varnish over millennia. They suspected a relatively uniform growth of the varnish. To substantiate this hypothesis, they conducted analysis of rock surfaces for which there is no doubt as to when they were formed. In the Great Basin, two types of surfaces comply with this condition. The melon-shaped basalt boulders in the Snake River Valley that were geologically created 14,500 years ago, abraded, I, I'm sorry, not created, rounded like this. They were abraded 14,500 years ago and therefore can't be older than that. So that's when these boulders were made into melons. And therefore, the rock art on it is more recent than the rounding of the boulders. So, there's that. And the circa 2,000-year-old basalt lava flows of the Craters of the Moon National Monument. In fact, deposition rates were nearly constant at both times, suggesting a rough linear deposition. And here you can see the last... 13,000 years on Earth, and all the rocks they sampled. Now, all of the analysis suggests that the earliest petroglyphs were created as early as the transition period from the Pleistocene to the Holocene. And this is the Younger Dryas event, about 12,000 years ago. And were repeatedly revised by indigenous people over thousands of years until the recent past, which is what we've been telling you all along. Now, at Celebration Park alone, one of the Idaho sites, rock engravings cover a span of almost 10,000 years. Right here. Take a look at that. The earliest images were abstract forms. Later, representational images were added. At other sites, again, representational figures dominated first and abstract patterns followed later. Hello. Overall, Andrea and his wife found a broad spectrum of styles and motifs at the sites. Ranging from line drawings to abstract geometric geometric patterns to large human-like creatures known as anthromorphs, many of which are squatter man, which are nothing more than plasma petroglyphs in the sky. Now, the team's method provides a link between the natural and human sciences. It enables age estimates for a statistically relevant large numbers of rock art elements, which were previously undateable. With modest effort and above all, without the need for destructive sampling, says Andrea, one of the authors, summing up the results of the study in North American Basin, the Max Planck researcher is already planning further expeditions to Saudi Arabia where there are a similar number of petroglyphs as the desert southwest, with Squatterman, mind you, right there. Whew. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that we are, we just had a breakthrough in rock art dating. It's non-invasive, it's X-ray fluorescence, and we're going to be able to quickly, within the next few years, understand the dates of lots of these petroglyphs and start to put the pieces together. The pieces of a plasma-filled sky in the past. That's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. We love each and every one of you. 
Share this video with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel and be safe. We love you. We'll see you at Squatterman 2022 in Ruidoso, New Mexico. Let's move. Mm -hmm.